What's up everybody, Bryce here with another video. If you guys just watched my flip one that I just put out, thanks for watching that, I really appreciate it and I'm glad to see you all again. So, it's about been about seven days since I posted my first video about flipping cards for profit and starting that journey with you all, so thanks for coming back for more. Um, basically, I'm making this video just to give you guys an update over the last seven days of how it's been going. And most of how it's been going is I haven't really bought any new cards, I just placed bids on some for tonight. And I'll keep you updated on those if I go ahead and end up buying those or winning the auctions. Um, I haven't bought in too many cards since the last video. Uh, just because the I haven't found very many good deals. I've still been doing research on the players I want to buy, etc. and so forth. Um, some things I've learned the last seven days, a lot of this has been from uh, just a ton of research from sports card investor Gary Vaynerchuk and some market research of my own. But... Um, some players that I've been sort of after the last week. Um, so we'll start off with Carly Lloyd and pretty much anybody on the U.S. women's national team. So as you guys might know, the women's national team, they won the World Cup, the Women's World Cup this last summer, and it was by a pretty convincing margin. They pretty much crushed everybody. It was great for us to watch. I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to watch them. Which brings me to why I'm buying Carly Lloyd cards right now is because this summer is actually the... Um, Summer Olympics, and for the first time, women's football, or I, don't, I shouldn't say for the first time, maybe it is the first time, I'd have to check, but first time in a while that women's football or women's soccer has been uh, part of the equation, and so, seeing as historically uh, the U.S. women's national team has done well in the World Cup, I would be, if I'm a gambling man, I'd say that they probably have a pretty good shot of winning it this summer, especially since they're, pretty much their whole, um, squad from the World Cup is returning for the tournament as well, so this is basically what my strategy is. Right now I'm going to buy uh, Carly Lloyd cards because she's been playing striker, she's scoring a lot of goals. Card investors and card collectors like goal scorers or goalies, so maybe Alyssa Nair or Ashlyn Harris might be on your radar. Um, but what I'm hoping is that if I buy like cards like Kristen Press, Carly Lloyd, Tobin Heath, because I love Tobin Heath, um, say they go on and they win the 2020, or what year is it? Yeah, the 2020 Olympics for the tournament, and they all play well, their card prices are going to naturally rise up. That's the one thing I've learned so far in my research is that if you time your selling and your investments right, you can make money. So, for example, I'm buying cards right now when no one's really thinking too much about the World Cup. They're starting to play qualifiers for it. Not the World Cup, I'm sorry, the Olympics, when not too many people are really thinking about it. And by the end of the tournament, I'm hoping that the women's national team is going to win and their card prices are going to naturally go up because more people are going to be thinking about it and they're going to be a little bit more well-known, a little bit more paid attention to. So that's just one of the strategies I use. Um, translating this now and transitioning over to basketball a little bit, um, I might have mentioned this in my last video, the two things I'm really sticking with with my strategies are going to be soccer because I love soccer and basketball because it's internationally really well-known. So for basketball, a couple players I've had my eyes on lately are Bam Adebayo from the Miami Heat. Um, I've been looking up his stats on ESPN and 538.com, and each season he's been progressively having a higher points per game average. And in addition to him, I've also been looking at Lonzo Ball because sports card investor has been pumping him up a lot. So I'm like, you know what, I'll get on the bandwagon, I'll give it a shot, why not take a risk and see if it pans out. That's going to be more of a long-term investment though. Um, other players I've been looking into, Tyler Hero, I think is a little bit underrated, just the way he's been playing, I like his style of play, and I think that since Miami has been quietly doing really well, I think they're the third or fourth seed in the East right now, as soon as they make the playoffs, what I might do is I might buy these cards now, so buy Bam Adebayo's rookies and Tyler Hero's rookies, which was in my last video, wait until they make the playoffs, and then that's when I make the, qu and that's when I make the quick sell and try to flip those for a profit, so that's just another strategy I've been kind of going with researching a little bit more. Uh, the last player who's been on my radar heavily has been uh, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, his, he's averaging 26 a game this season, which is up a lot from his last two seasons, I'd say, excuse me. So he's been an interesting player to keep his eye on, and now that he's not with the Lakers, now him, Zion, Lonzo, they're three young studs who are just going to make some noise in the NBA in the next couple seasons, and probably just tear up the court so if those guys pan out and I collect their rookies and I try to flip them around for a profit when they make the playoffs when they win championships when they make the all-star game you name it um hopefully a good result will turn out from that and again kind of sticking with that theme of uh 
not cultural context, I should say, but just context in the sporting world in general. So, for example, what I've thought about doing, actually, is waiting till the end of the NBA season, waiting probably a few weeks until it's over, the finals are over, and then that's when I start buying cards because no one's going to be thinking about the NBA for uh, that amount of time, or maybe people... Some players who have had bad seasons, maybe their cards are going to be sold off, etc. and so forth. I buy them because their price is going to be lowest at the end of the season. And then what I could do is if I wanted to flip up relatively quickly, I could wait till the season starts back up again. More people will be thinking about it. More people will be anticipating them having good seasons. And the card prices naturally go up. I looked this up with Lonzo. I think it was Lonzo Ball the other day. It's like, I think at the very... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was John Collins. Uh, John Collins' rookies, PSA 10s, were going for like, or maybe it wasn't PSA 10s. His rookie cards were going for, I believe, like $20, $30 at the end of the NBA season. And then at the start of the next season, they were up like 50 up to $50, $60. Now, it's only like a $30, $40 profit per card, but say you bought 10 of them. You easily made three to $400 with basically barely any work at all you don't really got to go anywhere you can just buy everything on ebay ship them out really cheaply etc and so forth so that's another thing i've kind of noticed with this whole card game is or the cold card flip game and the flip game in general is the fact that the more you invest into it the more you'll get out of it because if i just say i have like a 20 dollar budget budget if i bought one john collins card at the end of the nba season and flipped it for 50 60 bucks at the beginning of the next season, I would make $30, $40, which isn't, an, which isn't a ton by a lot of people's standards. But if I bought 100 of them, so say I spent, if my, if my math is right, like $2,000, I think the math is right there, well, then that turns into a thousands of dollars in profit right away. Like, you know, just just hand over fist. It, it, it's, a, it's just really easy. But like I said... You have to be willing to invest more money into it and take a little bit more risk, which for me, it just wasn't an option yet at the time. And plus, I've only made 1500 bucks flipping in 17 months. So you got to take the good with the bad. You got to, like I said, take a little bit more risks. I wish I took more risks doing this. But what my mistakes will be will hopefully be your guys' gain in knowledge and things like that. So um, those are just some of the strategies. I just want to give you guys a quick update on that. Um, hopefully my Carly Lloyd bids tonight will go through and I'll win a couple of her autograph cards. And then, uh, I guess we'll see what happens when the 2020 Olympic World Cup comes, or not the Olympic World Cup, 2020 Olympics comes around and hopefully the U.S. Women's National Team plays well because they're fantastic and they're just so wholesome people and they're hilarious. So check them out this summer if you all have a chance. So, um, yeah, and then I'm just going to keep looking up those players I mentioned earlier for basketball, try to see if I can get some good deals and we'll see what happens. So... Thanks again so much for watching, everybody. If you like the advice, hit the subscribe button. If you got any questions, just let me know, and I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. So take care, and we'll see you next time.